And we are rolling. What's up, Polar Bears? My name is Zachary, and I will be one of your co-hosts alongside Connor. What's up? Alyssa. Howdy. Landon. What up? And Hayden. Hello. Alyssa, why don't you go ahead and explain what exactly our Polar Bears are listening to right now? Well, this year's journalism class has decided to test new waters, so we have created this podcast. With that being said, welcome to the very first Bear Minimum podcast. Today is September 16th, 2022. Boy, do we have a lot in store for y'all today, so I hope you guys can bear with us. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by a very special person today. A father, a husband, a coach, a teacher, and an all-state kicker. Coach Redding. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Coach. How are you doing today? Doing pretty good. How are you? Pretty good. I'd like to say congratulations on the win against Ridgedale. Thank you. Impressive. Thank you. And since we're talking about coaching already, let's get into our first question. Why did you start coaching at HN? Well, to be honest, um, you know, I, I graduated from Arlington and did some coaching there at the junior high level, um, you know, and then moved up and did some volunteer assistant work with the varsity uh, right after high school. Um, once I got my first teaching job at Arcadia, I didn't I didn't coach those first two years just to focus on teaching and then uh, really I, I met coach Dennis he um, was my coach at Arlington um, and he got the job here uh, head coach and asked me to coach here and so that's why I, I came because I respected him as a coach and a person and he invited me to coach with him on staff and I thought who better to learn from than coach Dennis which is quite the guy kind of uh, impression did Coach Dennis leave on you? Um, you know, he just, he was he was an old school guy for sure. Um, you know, that hard work, you know, trumps everything kind of mentality and, uh, you know, just pushing, always grinding on on athletes and on us coaches as well to, to do our best. And, um, you know, just again, that hard work is gonna pay off in the long run. Okay, what's your most? Memorable coaching moment at Hard Northern. I think it would be one of the two Riverside wins. Um, I don't remember the exact year it was. It would have been Dalen Pease's junior year, I believe. So Owen Owen would have been a sophomore, but it's when we beat him with the very last play of the game. Um, that was kind of a turning point for the program. I felt a, a step forward because Riverside had beat us um, pretty handedly the last few times we had played them, and then we came out and everything was just going right. Uh, and like I said, with like eight seconds left, um, you know, Owen threw it up and Dalen came down with it, and we won the game. So it was it was pretty memorable, pretty awesome. Speaking of wins, do you have any like a game day routine, like any superstitions? <clears throat> Um, <laughs> I, I don't consider myself superstitious. I'm just a little stitious. No, just <laughs> office quote right there. Um, no, I don't know. I mean, I try to try to do the same things. Um, you know, as far as a routine, not really. Um, you know, we do the same warm up routine every every time. Uh, I know the kids like when the bus leaves at 4:40, so uh, I don't I don't know if that's a superstition or not, but <laughs> um, no, not really. I just try to mentally prepare for the game and who we're playing, you know. So, as you mentioned earlier, you went to Arlington. You said you had a little bit of coaching experience there. Yeah. So right after um, high school, my first year, I didn't do anything. Uh, at, Ar at Arlington or anywhere um, and then the next year I helped out with junior high for a couple years there um, coach Dennis was there at the time at the varsity level um, he he actually so my senior year is when he came to Arlington uh, and coached and then when I moved up to varsity I was pretty much working with him primarily uh, defensively um, and then like I said uh, that was for about three four years and then I got my first teaching job at Arcadia and so I didn't do any coaching those first two years there so all right so what would you say is the biggest difference between the culture at Arlington and the culture at Hard Northern um if there is one yeah I, I mean honestly what 
what we had at Arlington with um, like when I played is pretty similar to, to what we have here. Uh, you know, Coach Dennis obviously coached with Coach Bruno. You know, that was a pretty, I know practices were very intense here, uh, playing against some of those, you know, state championship teams. That would have been my freshman year when Hard Northern won state. Um, you know, just that tough, gritty mentality, um, you know, show up and work every day in practice and then go out and you already know you're going to win the game before you even step on the field type mentality. Um, we didn't really have that at Arlington to start. I think they're starting to get into that a little bit there. I don't, I haven't really been around the program in a long time, so I can't really comment on today. Um, but that's, I know what Coach Dennis brought back when, when he came back to Hard Northern was that, that mentality of, you know, practice is hard, practice is harder than the game so that the games are easy. Um, so that's what, you know, the, the culture is. And for our standpoint, you know, we, we really focus on the things we can control. Uh, we talk about EAT, um, E-A-T, effort, attitude, and tempo, uh, things that we can control when we're on the field. So, you know, that's what we're trying to, to work on as a team in, in our culture. All right, switching gears for a second. What's your most memorable teaching moment? Hmm, most memorable teaching moment. There's a there's a lot of memorable moments. <laughs> um, <laughs> trying to think. Put me on the spot here this morning. It's, it's early. This is really racking the memory for. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I I just enjoy interacting with the students. Um, you know, I know that science a lot of times isn't the most fun subject. Uh, notes especially, you know, we, we do notes quite a bit, but I don't know, I think the downtime in between, you know, just getting to know and talk with the students, not even science related, just, you know, being able to throw a dad joke in there and, <laughs> and get some get a couple laughs, <laughs> you know, but that those are, those are memorable moments and you never know what you're gonna get with some of the kids and some of the stories that they have. Um, to tell and share during class. So, you know, just those those little moments are, you know, what I enjoy. And um, I don't really have just one set memory that's like, oh, that's that's it, that's the memory, you know? So just all those little moments. Well, from my experience, your classroom can be a wild place. And I have a question for you. <laughs> do you have a pet spider in your classroom right now? We do have a pet spider right now. Um, our grip period class found him and we captured him in a in a beaker so um the, we put one of those little mesh coverings on that would go over a bunsen burner and then we got talking named him jerry we i did some research we found out he's a wolf spider he uh eats bugs you know insects so we have kids stop in from time to time and bring us insects uh, we did move him over to kind of a terrarium there were some fish tanks in the storage closet there in, in the science storage so he has a little terrarium uh, set up with little pebbles there's some crickets in there right now uh, but i do want to share a funny story so eighth graders first period were there when i transferred jerry from his beaker to his new home so i thought it would be very easy to do because it had the mesh covering so i was just going to flip the beaker upside down put it in the uh, terrarium and then take the beaker off and you know Jerry would be free in his little home. Well, I didn't realize when I flip it over, the beaker has a lip on it and Jerry can actually fit out through that little <laughs> hole. So he crawled up my arm. Uh, the kid the, and the eighth graders are they're just dying laughing. I mean, they saw him. He's crawling up my arm. He's got the furriest little legs uh, crawling up my arm. And I, I let out a scream. I was like, ah, ah, and hit him, slapped him off my arm. He lands on the ground. You know, I, I thought I might have killed him. He 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 was fine. He started crawling away. So then, I'm chasing him around the classroom with that mesh covering and the beaker, and trying to scoop him back into the beaker. Meanwhile, the eighth graders not helping, just sitting there, <laughs> laughing the whole time. So it was, I'm sure, it was a sight to see. But uh, it scared me a little bit. Um, you know, wolf spiders are harmless. They they can bite, but uh, unless you're allergic to to them you know this is i found this out in my research i don't really know that much about spiders just from what i've researched having a pet spider now so uh yeah pretty 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 wild times i guess <laughs> so to wrap things up today this is like a very serious question 
Do you ever wish you could go back to your glory days of being an all-state kicker? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, not really. I, uh, <laughs> you know, when I was in high school, I remember um, finding out I was first-team all-state kicker, and I was honestly pretty disappointed. Um, <laughs> you know, it, when I was in school, it was uh, I was a running back and defensive back, so I took pride in those things. Kicking was just no one else on the team could, so I did. Um, it was kind of just one of those things, like. I was, I was kind of embarrassed by it, honestly, but looking back now, I'm like, yeah, I mean, it was all first team all state. That's cool. You know, and, and I know, you know, it sounds funny, like, oh, football player, oh, kicker, you know, and so <laughs> I get it. You know, I, I like to poke fun at it now too, but uh, yeah, honestly, it's kicking was not really my glory days. Um, you know, honestly, my junior year, there were two separate occasions. So I, I do what's called toe bashing and I had a shoe um, that had a flat front. We have one in our, our bag there um, that we've used a couple times. But anyway, so I had to change shoes and this shoe was like from 1980. So it was older than I was. Um, the first time the officials were telling me I was going too slow changing my cleat out to this shoe. So I just stepped on the back heel. And so when I kicked the ball, the shoe actually flew off my foot and went further than the ball did uh, the first time I kicked. So it was pretty embarrassing doing that. And then the second time that the shoe came off, I pulled the laces to tie it and both of the laces broke in my hands because they were still from the 1980s. So it wasn't tied, like the laces just ripped off in my hands. So I'm just holding the laces and I kicked and the shoe fell, fell off that time too. So uh, yeah, it was, kicking wasn't, you know, it's yeah, cool first team all state, but I, I was not, I was really not very good, honestly. So <laughs> had some fun memories there too. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Coach. It's been I don't even know what to call it. It's been <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, and we'll be right back after a few s short messages. If you're enjoying the bare minimum, then you'll enjoy the paw print. September 30th, we got a group of hardworking fellows over there making sure that you know everything about Hard Northern and its activities. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our new segment on the bare minimum called The Hot Minute. So basically, every podcast, we'll interview a random student with a random set of questions. And this week, our guest is none other than the one and only junior football player, Justin Reffitt. <laughs> All right, Justin, how you doing today, bud? Good. That's good to hear. Are you ready for the hot minute? I'm always ready. Some spicy questions. You sure? Yep. All right. Well, let's get it going in three, two, one. What is the weirdest thing you've ever done in a water park? About drown in the toilet bowl. Oof, that's tough, man. So uh, how does this interview impact LeBron's legacy? Very heavily. This could take him down. Uh, what's your favorite fair food? Funnel cake. <laughs> what is the grossest thing you've ever done? I don't know. A lot of gross things. <laughs> Hot or cold? Hot. You sleep with socks on? No. Attaboy. Now, are you all bark and no bite? I'm all bite. <laughs> Can you swim? Yes, very good. How much can you bench? 290, but you can round that up to 300. How about squat? 520. What do you call Gatorade? Oh, I always call it Gatorade Belly Wash. <laughs> What's your favorite flavor of Belly Wash? You know, I was like a big orange Belly Wash. Oh, a boy. What's the last book you read? I couldn't tell you. What's your favorite pizza stopping? Sausage. You believe in aliens? <laughs> oh, yes. that's it. Well, thank you so much, Justin. It was a pleasure ha pleasure having you in here today. Uh, thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for our very first episode of The Bare Minimum. Thank you for listening, and of course, thank you for bearing with us. <laughs>